Bye. Yo, chat, what are y'all scared of? Bro, the number one fear I have, you go to a Diddy party and you drink some of the special Diddy mist. Next thing you know, you wake up with a loose butthole in Diddy right beside you. Now you scared of gay niggas. <laughs> and watch spookiest fears let's get to it fear is something every human experiences from the day we hop out the womb we're afraid of something it could be something instilled on in you by those around you a bad experience stuff you see in media or just something primal regardless of how or why you got it everyone has one it's like oprah you get a fear you get a fear you fears change as you get older the things that scared you as a kid most likely won't scare you when you're 70 or 80. when we're babies we're practically scared but curious about everything a dog barks too loud a firework goes off an ugly person smiles at you that, that last one sometimes doesn't go away surprise Yo, chat, what are y'all scared of bro the number one fear i have is getting a girl pregnant that i don't like bro getting like a whore pregnant <laughs> i don't know what i would do man i'm not gonna lie Rises, randomness unfamiliarity that's what scares us when we're babies like for me when i was a baby any form of loudness got me a train going by a thunderstorm people yelling at me those noises would often be so loud that my brain could only comprehend it as something bad's about to happen then we get a little older now we're a kid we have more experience i know now the train doesn't mean the world is ending and that ugly person smiling at me they're not a monster they're just ugly we can officially comprehend what's going on around us and we can actually move at this point is when we start getting into a new kind of fear the fears you develop from first-hand experience you woke up when they saw a spider staring at you from your ceiling now you're scared of spiders you got arachnophobia your brother wanted to play bloody mary or your dad was watching a scary movie right next to you now you're scared of demons you got you go to a Diddy party and you and you drink some of the special Diddy mist and potions and shit. Next thing you know, you wake up with a loose butthole in Diddy right beside you. Now you scared the gay niggas. That's just what it happens. Ah, the monophone. It was spring cleaning time and your mom was vacuuming the rug. Now you're scared of vacuums. You got zoogerphobia. That last one is real. These are the fears that can stick with you for a few days, a few months, a few years, or maybe even your whole life. Yeah them vacuums get serious like for me aside from my fear of dolls i was scared of needles if a vacuum had like a feature where like you could put like a wet like very moist little pocket on it right and like the vacuum feature still worked would you install it into your vacuum y'all know what i'm trying to get at and like you could use it for like whatever let me know in the dark for a minute like with needles anytime i had to go draw blood at the doctors it was chaos and normally i was a timid reserved kid probably off somewhere chilling on my psp but at the doctors i was crying trying to run fighting back and it was so frustrating needles are would always bad tell me i'm overreacting but why would i willingly get stabbed in the forearm by a random person it, it doesn't make sense mom eventually i got over it nowadays i just close my eyes and grab onto something but the dark that one took me a little longer to get off being scared of the dark is a primal fear of humans even our stick and stone banging ancestors knew not to hunt at night and they were stupid the dark is like the definition of fear of the unknown or at least an introduction to it because it's not like when you're in the dark you're scared because you're seeing the color black well uh, the scary part is not knowing what's in the dark with you it could be that slender man it could be momo it could be a racist cop you don't know because you can't see the number one place you don't want to end up in the dark is north korea bro. another thing driving on back roads in the dark like in the country with no street lights is one of the scariest things ever because you can you genuinely you genuinely cannot see what's in front of you or what's behind or what's to the side of you bro everything's pitch black so you never know what's gonna come out especially if you're a black man nigga i ain't gonna lie you finna run into a fucking clansman you finna become a sacrifice and, shit. and since you can't see it makes it scary and the room could be perfectly empty when the lights are on not a person in sight but the second you turn them lights off your brain goes on high alert and assumes every demon from hell just spawned in and at that point you don't know you don't know if it's your imagination or if, if that really is the king of pop right behind you that's why i always hated having sleep paralysis growing up you would wake up seeing pitch black unable to move and you're like half dreaming and half not so you start seeing the scariest things like what is Barney doing here? I was kind of forced to get over my fear of the dark when I was staying in the Dominican Republic. If you don't know, outside of resorts, DR is is dr over yeah. there there's constant and i mean constant power outages. Literally sometimes you won't go more than 2 days without hearing at least one. So being in the dark, although it may be scary, especially over there with the witches, the bats, the flying roaches, it's something you got to get used to. And I believe it but like oh, oh shit even no i did get used to it but i was 13 so i was already a teenager and by the time you're okay. a teenager there's bigger things to worry about because you're officially in high school that night before the first day of school is the most anxiety filled night you could think yes, of i used to bro. be up thinking am i gonna make new friends 
What if my old friends don't like me? What if the teachers don't like me? What if nobody what if, likes me? Okay, but the thing is, like, bro, it depends. Like, you're either going to be excited or scared, bro. Because, like, at the same time, like, bro, I was always excited to go back to school because I was, I, I, I was interested in seeing the new bad bitch that was in the class this year. You know, some horny nigga shit. But besides that, like, I don't know, bro. Like, it's, like, also kind of scary because, you feel me, you feel like you're in a main character and, like, everybody's going to, like, notice you and shit, but nobody really cares. But what if they rock with the first day fit? At that age is when we care the most about what other people think. Getting embarrassed back then feels like it's worse than anything else that could happen to you. And I knew that all too well. I was a shy background character type of student back then. I okay. avoided everything that could potentially lead to me being laughed at or murmured about. And I especially avoided presentations. Presentations were the worst. Anytime I had to do a project involving a presentation, I've never hated I either avoid doing it or I do it, they weren't but that I let bad. my partners do all the presenting. I was that kind of classmate. But there were times you couldn't avoid doing that dreaded solo presentation. And tell me if this ever happened to y'all, but y'all ever had a presentation day and you're nervous, but you're going last, so it's whatever. You walk into class, you sit down, and all of a sudden, you look around, and every single person who was supposed to go before you was absent? Huh. Looks like Michael is yeah. also absent. Well, Derek, you're up. Gotta be top five worst feelings ever. Bro, I'd get up Doing presentations like it's a starter. Like, being the first person to do presentations, though, that was horrible, though. That was horrible. I, I, I will admit I've never been like the person to like hate presentations because you feel me I don't know I feel like I've always just kind of been comfortable in front of people bro but like I don't know and it was all types of um 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 so yeah um, yeah and, um um yeah type um, shit type um, shit yeah so um yeah, type shit yeah yeah, yeah. It was terrible. But the thing that scared me more than presenting in school was school shootings. Prior to my freshman year, I don't remember bro. doing a single lockdown drill. Maybe one in eighth grade, but they weren't that common. I was only used to solely walking out the building during fire drills, so I didn't know why we were doing that. To me, it was just another excuse to not do classwork for another few minutes. I loved it. But when I found out why we did them, it instilled a new fear in me. A fear that I could randomly be sitting in class one day and hear two pops down the hall and know in my mind, I'm probably not going to be saving any. It's sad, but it's true. What was I, a 5'7", 114-pound freshman supposed to do? Nothing. We're powerless in this situation. You're on me. If a school shooter came, bro, I ain't going to lie. I'm running out the class. I ain't going to lie. I'm not the hero. I ain't the hero. I ain't the MC, nigga. I'm, I'm going to be the background character that just runs and saves his life, bro. I'm not going to lie. I've actually been in a school sh uh, shooting situation before. Literally, all I did was just stay in the classroom, bro. It was a false alarm, but still, I, I was not going to go outside. Only hope is literally to become cool with every white kid in the school. That's the only precaution you can take. Luckily, once you graduate, most of these school fears go away. Even though you're in college, it's definitely not the same. You're an adult now. Yes, you may still carry some of the fears from your childhood, whether it be fear of the ocean, your fear of heights, your fear of vacuum still for some reason. Get over it, bro. You can manage not yourself. Not that bad. You can avoid these things. The fears you're really looking out for when you're an adult are the mental ones. Commitment, rejection, loneliness, and of course, failure. Failure Child is something support. I think most of us by the age of 18 start fearing. If not, at least thinking about. The idea of legacy. What do I want to accomplish in my life? And will I accomplish it? Yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You start looking toward the potential future where of becoming an architect, a doctor, a lawyer, or anything else you want to be in life, you just end up working the drive through at your local Burger King. This Every fear of failure sometimes way. consumes us completely. We imagine all these possible ways we can fail instead of just focusing on the ones where we can actually win. It makes no sense. What is wrong with you? Don't you want to win? Don't you want to succeed? As someone who didn't know what they wanted to do in college and watched way too much YouTube, failure felt inevitable for me. By the time I saw my SAT scores junior year, I was like, yep. I'm serious too. This fear of failure used to plague my mind. It's the reason I always felt bad for Asian kids growing up. Because if I had that fear, <laughs> you know they had it. Fear of Man. failure is not always about career or academics though. It can be something as simple as fear of getting rejected by your crush, fear of playing bad for your sports team, or not wanting to learn a new thing like driving because you feel like you'll just hit everybody. I feel like those type of fears are like, they're kind of, those type of fears are kind of weak though. Like being scared to drive, like, at the start, it yeah I, okay. Let me say this: I understand those fears, but most of those fears is you're scared until you start doing it. Especially like, like things with driving, bro. Once you get behind that wheel, just like you'll start being scared. You'll stop being scared. I feel like the fear of like getting your ass beat because you you failed your grades and shit. That's for real. That's serious. 
But like driving, that's not that deep. There's so many ways you could fail. How could you not be afraid of it? It's quite literally the ultimate unknown. You can't predict the future. But the funny thing about failure is we literally fail all the time as humans. Like, we do. Have you ever seen a baby fall in public while trying to walk? That baby failed at walking, but it doesn't just sit there and cry. You know, at that height, they, they don't take fall damage. They just get back up and try again. If not, but how would they learn how to walk? If baby. Exactly. The thing with failure, bro, people fail to realize, bro, like, yo. Failure is, is, is supposed to happen, bro. The reason why these babies don't care when they fail is because they're dumb. And I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes in life, you just gotta be dumb. Like, you gotta be dumb. You gotta just do things. And if you fail, oh, well. You can't be scared of failure, bro. If these didn't bounce back from failure, we would have a society full of Stephen Hawking. Even back to Mr. Put the Fries in the Bag working the drive through at Burger King. He could be doing that at the fossil age of 30. And that's not necessarily failure. He might have just fallen like that baby and he's just waiting to get back up. It's what Real. he decides to do after his fall that determines whether or not it's failure. It's dependent on what you do and what you perceive as success. Sadly, this is something people don't realize till they're older. Sometimes all the way past adulthood, when you reach that old man status. And by that point, it's not that you can't anymore. Or is that you're more worried about other things like why parts of you are sagging that low and what's on your mind at that age is death death is literally something that's gonna happen to every single one of us you can be watching this video in 2024 2054 the year 3000 unless you make like some immortality super soldier serum it's gonna happen to you death is scary i don't like thinking about that i mean i've literally been alive my whole life i don't know nothing besides living the idea of not experiencing anything on the face Chad, of are you scared of death ever again it's hard to wrap my mind me around. personally no i'm not gonna lie bro I'm, I think that's the one thing about me. I'm not scared to die. Like, I don't know why. I'm just not scared to die. I've never been scared to die. Like, if I die, I die, bro. Like, that's just the end of my journey, bro. I got to accept that, bro. I feel like my, like, failure to be scared of death has made me, like, has led me to be able to achieve things because I don't really care. A cap a little bit. I feel like being scared to die is kind of dumb because we're all going, going to die, bro. You just got to accept that fact and just make the most out of what life you're given, bro. I feel like that's the thing. Sadness, but no happiness. No more arguments, but also no more good moments. No more chocolate ice cream, but also no more salted caramel ice cream. You don't go through any more hardships, but you also lose that great feeling when you eventually overcome that hardship. It's scary. And death is especially scary when you lose someone close to you. Now, I'm yeah. going to share something with you guys that I've never shared on this channel before. About five years ago from the making of this video, September 2019. I lost one of my close friends. And at the time, I was distraught. I had lost my grandfather three years prior. So I knew that death, death isn't something that just hits you up like, hey, I'm in town. I brought donuts. Let's link up. It's a surprise, a very, very bad one, but a surprise nonetheless. But Damn. with this one, it felt different. When you're older, as sad as it sounds, you expect it eventually. Doesn't mean yeah. it doesn't shock or hurt anyone, because it does. It, it really it's does. It's your grandparents, you know. I mean, like, bro, it's just a matter of time. Like, you just got to enjoy the time you have. But when it's your friend, bro, like, you don't expect that shit, bro. So it hits you harder. We tend to die when we get older. But when you lose someone close to you that was at a young age, that's just not something you're expecting. People are less accepting of those kinds of deaths. I was sad. I was angry. I was confused. But more than anything, I was scared. I had close encounters with death before, but these encounters didn't compare to how close death feels when you lose a loved one. It felt like death was right around the corner, just waiting. Waiting to take another one of my loved ones or to just take me. But let's take a step back and look at this positively. If death is so close to us and unpredictable, then that gives us even more of a reason to cherish, to experience, to try. Cherish those around you, cherish yourself, cherish any good moment you can and find a lesson or even humor in the bad ones because you may not know when your last one will be. Experience new foods, new activities, new anything, and make sure to try. Please try. Don't let your fear of failure or your fear of death or your fear of me or your fear of anything for that matter stop you from doing what you want to do. Whether it be applying for that school, uploading that first video, or facing that fear of women that a lot, <laughs> and I mean a lot of y'all commented. Yeah. Yo, do y'all, yo, yo, chat, do y'all fear women? I'm not going to lie, fearing women is crazy. It's absolutely absurd. I don't know how you can. Like, if you fear women, you just haven't talked to them. Yes. Bro, just talk to women. Just talk to them. It's so easy. Just talk to them. I'm telling you, bro. Like, women are just people. Nigga, they're people. Like, and I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. This is a secret of, this is really the secret of how I pulled, like, every single bad bitch I pulled. Women get compliments a lot. And most of the, and usually, in like, very attractive women 
That's all they get, compliments. So one thing you should do to attract popular women is just not compliment them. Treat them like they're a normal person, bro. I'm telling you, the more you treat women like they're your bro, the more they'll be attracted to you, bro. Especially Especially if they're bad. I'm telling you right now. Just treat them like they're regular people, bro. Like, don't overthink it. I'm telling you, bro. It's literally a secret. I pulled so many bad bitches that I really should have not have been able to pull just because I did that. I'm not going to hold you. We're going to have to tackle this in a separate video. Giving up wasn't an option for me in this YouTube channel. There were a lot of moments when I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I knew I wanted it to happen because I'd rather be the dude that dies trying than the dude who just was too scared to try. It's how you get all these stories of these random old heads saying, man, if I would have kept it up, I would have been the next Jay-Z, man. Yeah, 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 Cracky. Take my dollar and go. Not everyone will support you, and that's okay. You don't need them to. As long that's as real. you believe you can achieve. There's a powerful quote by this dude, Ralph Waldo Emerson, that goes, fear defeats more people than any other thing in the world. So the question is, are you going to let it defeat you? Me personally? Hell nah, man. I ain't going to lie. Last thing I'm, gonna, I'm finna yap about. What he just talked about, like at that last part, really does resonate with me, bro. I'm not finna lie. With this whole YouTube journey I've done, I've had a lot of people come up to me talking about, yo, were you not scared to post? Yo, how did you just get started? Yo, I want to do YouTube too, but I'm just scared of what people are going to think about me. Nigga. I used to stream back when I was 19 years old to zero viewers playing Star Wars, Star Wars Battlefront, sitting on the side of my bed with a PS4 webcam. I don't know why. But I've just, I never felt embarrassed back then, bro. I don't, I've never felt embarrassed about anything that happened on the internet for me, bro. I don't know. I think that maybe, maybe that's just one of my secret superpowers. I don't feel embarrassment from others. I just don't. It doesn't really faze me, bro. And I feel like that's why I've been able to do this YouTube thing for as long as I can. But I'm going to tell y'all right now, if you want to start doing content creation, you got to get over your fears, bro. Yeah, some people might life it. Yeah, some people might laugh at you. People for sure laughed at me back in the day, bro. They thought I was crazy for doing what I do. But now, those same people, they're sucking my dick now. They are. They trying to get closer to me. They trying to be my friends and shit. I remember there was this, it was this one nigga, bro. He used to clown me on the low. He thought I ain't know. He used to clown me, talk shit about me all the time. About my YouTube shit. I thought he was my friend. I ain't, I ain't even know he was talking shit about me. I remember somebody let me know one day I stopped being friends with him. Nigga, the day I hit 100K on my first YouTube channel, who do you think was one of the first 10 niggas in my DMs talking about congratulations? It's an evil world we live in, bro. I'm telling you, don't be scared, bro. Don't be scared of what people think about you. Do what you want to do. And if you want to do this content shit, you want to be a rapper, you want to be an athlete, be aware of what you're getting into. Be aware if you can actually do it. But if you can, go after it. Don't give a fuck about nobody who says anything bad about you. I'm telling you, you can accomplish it. All right, I'm just keeping it real. Good video, though. Yo, uh, Derek FDB, good motherfucking video, bro. Really good, though. I like it. I really like it. <laughs>